Yes. Hey everybody, welcome back to Quarantine Conversations. I am Fred Willis, your gracious host. And uh, you know, I have a very special guest, my co-host of this series of shows, yes. Rhonda Willis. Hey guys. So uh, we've been talking, we've been doing a few shows here. This is show number three for us. Yeah. And uh, tonight, or rather in this show, I want to talk about a familiar topic. Only what you do for Christ will last. Yes. And uh, I want to talk about that because the last few weeks have um, you kind of shared some stuff with me that I hadn't heard before. Yes. In, in regard to uh, what I do, what we do. And so I want to just use that to encourage uh, other people because I genuinely have been encouraged by myself. Mm -hmm. And so one story... Um, she shared today that I want to share with you all. Yes. Uh, and then we'll share another one. Go ahead and tell tell the people <laughs> what you heard. <laughs> what I heard. Yeah, um, what so you today heard. Um, I was talking to one of the mothers of our church. Mm -hmm. And she had called and she was asking me because she saw a kid who looked like Jalen. <laughs> and so uh, um, she said, I just knew she had asked me had I been around kids. And I said, no. So she said, oh, okay. She said, well, my cousin wants to say something to you. So I was like, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and so he got on the phone and he was just saying, uh, thank you. He said, because when he came to visit Calvary uh, a few years back, he said, me and Fred were very kind mm -hmm. to him. We were very loving. Uh, you know, he really appreciated that. Mm -hmm. um, that we were very kind and, and I was kind of taken back by it because yeah. you know you don't you don't expect people <laughs> right to say that you know and then he began to you know share some things that the Lord had said to him uh, regarding Fred and I in ministry so mm -hmm. you know it was just encouraging to hear um, from him you know it was unexpected but it was great and mm -hmm. so yeah I forgot his name though yeah well that's okay but you know it's so interesting you know, when you hear messages like that, mm -hmm. especially when what that one in particular was about, because yeah. that's like kind of what we do. You know, we nice to people. We try to be we nice. We try to be nice. <sighs> <laughs> we try, you know. Somebody help us. You know, you know, I've been in situations where I'm like, you know what? I'm not even going to try anymore. Yeah. You know, you're not worth the energy of trying to fake it. So, you know, if that's what we're going to do, that's what we're going to do. But it's so much easier when you can just be yourself and you can be warm. You can be nice. People are accepting of who you Absolutely. are. Absolutely. It's not a fight to be nice. You know, that's really good. Pretty, really good. And it's even better when, you know, people can say that you've impacted them on some level. So Absolutely. that was really good. That was uh, encouraging and affirming in some way, I yeah. guess, you know, um, in regard to tonight's topic, what we're talking about or today's topic, rather. Um, only what you do for Christ will last. This song was popularized, I guess it was popularized by James Cleveland, uh, accompanied by Billy Preston, one of the most uh, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. soul stirring accompaniments Come on. Come on. Uh, in gospel music of that time. Even still today, those glissandos or those arpeggios are still, um, yeah. That's, that's <laughs> if you can do them. <laughs> You can play, you know, oh God bless you. Yeah, that's something that I look to a skill. I look to, uh, when accompanying somebody, literally accompanying their words, the spoken words. And there are people who can do that. Um, uh, but the song James Cleveland, he didn't sing it. He just kind of spoke the words. Uh, and I'm going to read a portion of those lyrics, uh, right now. It says you may build great cathedrals, large or small. Uh, you can build skyscrapers, grand and tall. Mm -hmm. You may conquer all the failures of the past. Certainly want to do that. But only what you do for Christ will last. Remember only what you do for Christ will last. Remember only what you do for Christ will last. Only what you do for him will be counted in the end. Only what you do for Christ will last. Mm -hmm. And sometimes in church, it's easy to confuse doing it for Christ and doing it for church. Uh, even for me, 
you know, going to work at church, <laughs> uh, going to work at church can muddy up the work that I do, you know, for Christ, you know, because sometimes you think you're doing it for Christ and you're really just doing it for church. Right. Sometimes you doing you think you're only doing it for the church, but the bigger picture is you're doing it for Christ. Right. And so we have that promise, you know, about only what we do for Christ will last. Um, and will last meaning, you know, that work. I'll go to Revelation, you know, I said the, that works do follow them, you know. Um, that means that even though they passed on, you know, people remember what they've done. Maya Angelou said that people may forget what you said, but they'll never forget how you made them feel. Yeah. And so that was kind of what you heard today, you know. And it's so odd that the first time I, I had that said to me was at church over a misunderstanding. Uh, and that was said to me as we were negotiating some stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so they, they said that something I said made them feel a certain way. And, you know, playing at church, working at church can really just kind of sour what you do sometimes and make you not want to do it. Yeah. You know, um, so even in tense moments like that, how do you fight that discouragement and keep pressing on? Knowing you're doing it for a bigger cause. Um, to, to me, for me, is uh, I call my mom. Venting, you know, yeah, that's a good way. And I, you know, or I talk to Fred, yeah. you know. <laughs> it's plenty of times we call each other and we're just like, Absolutely, yo. yeah. Like, you know, this hurt, you You, you first. <laughs> right. <laughs> you first, because... I got I got to dump this on somebody, <laughs> you know, somebody who understands, yeah, somebody who won't judge me for feeling that way. So venting, what else? Venting, um, and you know, just you know, building and just building, talking to my own self, encouraging my own self. All right, you know, I was I was I was made for this. I was mm -hmm. born for this. You know, it hurts right now, but I feel like God has a greater plan for it. You mm -hmm. know, and also in the Word, you know, mm -hmm. building myself up in the yeah, Word and things to. like that. So, mm -hmm. and thinking how Jesus handled those people, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> who were mean and trying to crucify him and in his circle. Uh, and act, act, absolutely. So, okay. So what about when you're discouraged, you know, you're doing your best. Um, you know, you're doing your best. You, you're doing the best with the hand you were dealt and you don't <laughs> have a winning hand. <laughs> so how do you. How do you encourage yourself to keep going? Nothing is wrong. You're just not achieving uh, what you want to achieve in that, you know, work you're doing for the church and ultimately for Christ. I mean, I think, I guess in the overall, it's just keep trying. All I can do is try, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, believe that God will just get the glory out of the situation, whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. Just try. Jonathan McReynolds said it. Just try. Just try I'm going to try. try. Yeah. Well, I love it. Just just keep trying. But, you know, I'll be honest. I'll speak for the quitters. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, there was car rides home when the radio is not on. Um, and you, you know, you quit in your head. Yeah. You go over your resigna resignation speech. <laughs> you go home and you type know, it up. <laughs> you, you use your phone to, mm -hmm. you know, to dictate the letter. Yeah. And um, it is hard. It is... Um, it's demoralizing. You know, it makes you not want to even do it again. It makes you not Absolutely. even want to pick up and say, give it another try. Mm -hmm. uh, especially, you know, recently, I don't know what's been going on in, in my city of Fort Worth. We're in Fort Worth. But the landscape here in the city of Fort Worth is so... Um, I don't really know how I would um, de define it. Uh, here in, in Fort Worth, it seems like it's just so hard to serve in church now, you know. We've had, I have encountered, I'm, I'm the one, I've encountered more um, <laughs> scenarios than she has. Because he's the musician. But I've encountered like pastors who just allow the members to walk all over you. You know, I was in, in rehearsal mm -hmm. one night and it was just off the rails. And, you know, somebody said to me, I, I, if I wasn't there, I wouldn't believe it. But they said, you the leader, you're supposed to let people talk to you crazy. And I said... Where did you get that from? You know, and it was just so odd that people right. feel that way. Feel that way that they're entitled. Well, no, 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 no. I know they feel that way. But they said it. Because their actions do it. But for somebody to say it right. and say it directly to me, 
I didn't know how to. Pro- I did know how I wanted to process that, but I just really didn't. You know, that took me a, took me back. Yeah. You know, just having. I don't know. But some, you know, just some. They just don't have respect for people. Yeah. You know, they don't. They don't know how to respect people, and maybe that comes from a background, a growing up thing, or mm-hmm. you know, whatever the case may be. Um, and so, yeah, it is kind of hard when you have those type of people. He'd be like, all right. Yeah, but you know, it used to be you could go in and tell the pastor, you know, not that you're a tattletale, but you at least want to climb the ladder, I mean, you know, you have can a basic to him and he'll have your back in the situation. And I'm telling you, I've been in situations. I'll never forget. I was in a rehearsal and I said, okay, we're going to start rehearsal and we're going to go around the choir stand and everybody say your name. And I think I went the third person. And I was like, your name? And they just sat there. And I was like, wow. Whoa. I'm like, <laughs> what do you, I mean, like, it was a family. So I'm like, everybody else knows you but me. Right. You know, so why won't you say it? And so, I mean, it was just so odd that, you know, I can name at least three situations uh, in the last decade. That just really made me want to quit playing all together. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I don't know how what how I'm going to get this music mu- musical release. But it won't be at church. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. Not if I have to go through that. You know, so I don't know. Yeah. I don't, I, as the, the more I reflect on it, I'm just glad that season is over. Man. That, let me think back. In 20, from 2011 to 2012, I, I quit one church. And I was fired from another. And I said, okay, now I'm, I'm in too many churches. You know, up until that point, I had only been at three churches. You know, mm-hmm. I had been at three churches. And I'm talking tenured. Um, so, from 2000 to 2010, only three churches. Uh, so, and two churches I was serving at concurrently. So, really, I had only been, you know, in a different plan situation that one, you know, one other time. So, then it showed me some stuff. And I was like... I don't know how people do it. Mm-hmm. I don't know how people spend 30 years playing at church because, wow. You know, yeah. I mean, think of, and they have families. Yeah. They have families and you can't, you can't just walk off somewhere where well, some of them have jobs, you know, away from that. But, you know, doing full-time music used to be a thing that was very viable, yeah. you know, for Absolutely. churches. You could play at church and you could, you know, you could do some stuff, you know, but, you know, you think about walking off and it's like, <sighs> Yeah. You know, but then you go to the church and they want you to be a hundred percent, you know, they want you all in and stuff like that. So I'm venting a little bit now. But you know, the topic <laughs> the topic of the show is only what you do for Christ will last. Yes. So I'm gonna read this other song here. This is uh he'll understand and say well done. It says if when you give the best of your service, telling the world that the Savior has come, be not dismayed. When men don't believe you, he'll understand and say, well done. Oh, when I come to the end of my journey, weary of life and the battle is won, carrying the staff and the cross of redemption, he'll understand and say, well done. You know, and sometimes I think that's other believers. We treat each other bad because stuff like that, Mm -hmm. you know, we know God will take care of it in the end. So, you know, the way I treat you now, you'll you'll be all right. Mm -hmm. You'll get over it. (laughs) It's the Christian way, you know, take your lumps. You know, but I, th- I think it's, it suffice it to say, you know, we have feelings too. Those of us that serve in church, um, because I think sometimes that's really the only tangible way some people equate doing something for God. Mm-hmm. Is if they do it at church. By what you do at church. <laughs> you know, and to go to coincide with uh, another one of our shows talking about identity. Yeah. Our identity is what we do, you know, uh, and sometimes our identity should not be what we do. But we make it what we do. So, you know, it is. Um, it's hard to deal with. It is. You know, it makes you want to quit. I mean, it makes you want to hard to deal with. Yeah. So before we, um, I can't leave it like that. Give me one instance where it has been, it has proven to be rewarding. Where God has shown himself to be a rewarder of them. Not just them that diligently seek him, but those that serve him. 
give me an example of um well you know. i'll say um i can say at um the church we grew up when we first moved to texas you know my mom was the choir director mm-hmm. and we had a family to join and uh they were singers and um <laughs> they wanted to lead a song in the choir mm-hmm. so my mom hadn't chose them yet you know to lead a song and you know it came into this whole big you know tangent private meetings and things like that oh, wow. but at the end of the day they ended up respecting my mom mm-hmm. for her stance as the choir director. Mm-hmm. They did get their song, but they got a <laughs> song that was befitting for them. Right. It was not a song, you know, that they would probably pick for they, themselves. Right. But at the end, mm-hmm. if mom prevailed in that. And so I looked to, to be like that one. <laughs> yeah, because you got to have the, the support of your leaders. Yes, and you she know. did. And, you know, they all had meetings. And, oh. you know, I don't know. I don't know the whole story. <laughs> I do know. I know some things, though. But they were a very outspoken mm-hmm. family. She'll tell me when we're done taping exactly who it is. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they were very outspoken. But, you know, at the end of the day, mom kept her Christ like. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. it wasn't no going off, no fighting. It wasn't no nothing like that. Right. But, you know, she stood her ground yeah. and say, you know, this is what we're going to do and blah, 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 blah. Even when we got choir robes, mm-hmm. they fought that. Wow. You know, and getting choir robes. Um, and so, yeah. <laughs> it, it it but you know the reward is you know being rewarded yes. you know sometimes you you need that to just to keep you going to mm-hmm. keep you going to say you know what you're doing the right thing this opposition right here it happens you know but keep doing what you're doing you're doing the right thing you're on the right road you're leading us the right way mm-hmm. especially when the people you lead can say that mm-hmm. you know that's that is um that's the best that's what we need absolutely you know some i think that's why we have the pastor pastoral appreciation services mm-hmm. you know uh because they they need to hear from the people uh-huh. some we need pastor, a musician appreciation uh that would be <laughs> ideal <laughs> that would be good but yes, the minutes you know, music. we know that's not always on the schedule absolutely and that's fine you know um but thank god for the pastors who do make room in in the service make room in the budget mm-hmm. you know to show appreciation Absolutely. and I, I tell musicians to also do that for your church you know uh sometimes it's as simple as you buying the supplies mm-hmm. you know you don't always need a, a reimbursement for supplies you know so do that so we learn ways to serve yes. you know serve where you are um and so i'm going to do this as we wrap this up this is a short one today um, I'm in he- Hebrews six and I'm in verse 10 and it says, for God is not unrighteous to forget mm-hmm. your work and labor of love, mm-hmm. which you have showed toward his name in that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. That's the apostle Paul. We believe as the author of Hebrews in, in uh, chapter six and verse 10, mm-hmm. where he says that God is not unrighteous. Mm-hmm. And that's, I like that wording because. Paul is implying that to forget will be unrighteous, you know, and so God is not unrighteous to forget our labor of love. Uh, He says that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. And so um, part of that 2011, 2012 uh, situation, I was at a church, you know, a traditional church, and uh, we wanted to just kind of bring them up to speed a little bit, (laughs) just a little bit. You know, we're inching them. Uh, some places um and and i mean that was a meetings and yeah <sighs> i am not a meeting person please do not have meetings with me text me email me put it in a letter he can sit in the meeting yeah i despise meetings but anyway anyway it was a lot to get it was a lot to get a little done and so one of the things we did that we started a praise team and that yeah. praise team, oh man, it was fought so hard, and I, it was. I didn't even really, I didn't really think about it because I just wanted to do it, you know. Right. And we had people that wanted to do it, so we did that. And I remember one Sunday <laughs> after we sang, and it, this was a learning experience because I learned to, you know, that people's feelings are valid, you know. Absolutely. And so the people said they didn't sing a song, they didn't sing a hymn. 
And we we sang a hymn, but we kind of yes, we yeah. we backdoored it with another song, so they didn't recognize it as a hymn because they want you know whatever. They so they want the traditional. So the pastor came in and he made his remarks and he knew that we were doing a praise team and that we were altering the, 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 the service, the order of service a little bit to have the praise team at the beginning. And I'll never forget. He said, did they scratch you? Did they scratch you? And by that he was saying, you know, did they sing a hymn? Did they affect you? Mm-hmm. Did they, did they meet that need of yours? And that's uh, that was the first time I had hands-on experience with the membership controlling the pastor, and that Absolutely. that was hard to do. Um, and and I saw also how jaded you can become when you lose sight of your eternal reward, because you know you're just so sick and tired of the folks in front of you yes. <laughs> that you know the end doesn't really matter. But um, he did that. And we were fought so hard at that church. I was. Rhonda wasn't. She wasn't even doing anything there. She was coming, but man. So, Mm -hmm. you know, that chapter is kind of a blur. I don't focus on it too much. I don't think about it too much. (laughs) We met great people there. We We did did meet great people there. Um, And a few weeks ago, uh, Mm -hmm. somebody said something to, uh, to her about that season. We didn't even know that he was there. Yeah. And so just just kind of share a little bit about that because it yes. blessed me um when she said it and I'm still kind of you know I am I'm still like mm-hmm. I'm still processing it because back then something that was fought so hard you know like people weren't really they they didn't really say they didn't really say anything about it. Mm-hmm. You know, they just kind of followed the lead, like, blah, it's nothing, it's like whatever. It is what it is. It is what it is. <laughs> you know, who is this new guy kind of trying to change everything? And, you know, yeah. so just share that. Yeah. So um, I ran into um, a guy, um, and um, we were talking about church. And, and so he asked me where I went to church, and I let him know. And he was talking about his former church. And I said, well, what was your former church? And he gave me the name. And I said, oh, my husband used to play there. <laughs> and he said, did he? So he was loving, you know, we were doing dates and stuff like that. So uh, I, he said, well, show me a picture of him. So I went and grabbed my phone and I showed him. He was like, I remember him. And so he was saying, he said, your husband was trying to implement the praise and worship. At the church. I said yes. And he said. That's the reason why me and my wife joined. The church. Because we love the music. (laughs) And so to hear about it. What almost 10 years later. Yeah. yeah. Almost 10 years later. I was like wow. Mm -hmm. And so as soon as I got off. I made sure I called him. And let him know. (laughs) Mm -hmm. You know. Because you never know. You know what. You know what you're doing yeah. and who is impacting. So, mm-hmm. but they served at that church. They no longer go there anymore. But mm-hmm. they served there for years. But he said the music ministry was one of the first things that grabbed them and attracted them to the church. And he served in a leadership role. He grew into a leadership he role did. there. And and that's also um, a testament to 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 serving because you just don't know how impactful you are because he wasn't just a pew member there. He actually got involved and, yeah, you know, worked his way up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he was in the leadership position there. Absolutely. So, you know, I don't glory in that, but it was good to hear, it was. you know, especially. And it's uh, encouragement, you yes, know, it's yes. encouragement. And you never know when your encouragement is going to come or what time mm-hmm. it's going to come. It may be just when you need it most. It doesn't know. Right. You don't know how many years later or yeah. whatever. Because I'm getting a lot of encouragement now. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, that, you know, not saying that I never got it, but I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> but it's different because, you know, now people are celebrating your voice. You know, um, they, they're not attaching it to anybody or anything. Not mm-hmm. me. You know, it's not y'all. It's you. I guess if I were there, they would say y'all, you know, like yeah. he said today, talking about us, you know, but it's good to hear. We need to hear that. Absolutely. You know, um, the Bible says to let another man praise you. Mm-hmm. And so in, in another place, it says don't withhold honor when it's in your power to bestow it. Yeah. You know, so sometimes we, we, we break the law. We break God's law. 
<laughs> you know, we know we should say something. Yeah, you absolutely. know, and it's and I'm not saying that you got to manufacture something. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just naturally it's flowing out of you. You say, oh, I'm not gonna say that. Mm-hmm. You know, but that's part of the only what you do for Christ will last. I'm going to Luke six and thirty eight when he says, "Give and it shall be given unto you." Not talking about money. It's applicable to money, sure. Yeah. But he's saying he's talking about forgiveness in that passage, and what he's saying is. Press down, shaking together, and running over, shall mean giving to your bosom, you know, flowing into your heart, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it's saying when you forgive, you you know, others will forgive you. But just talking about the super abundance that it comes back in return. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. so only what you do for Christ will last. He's going to make it last. He's going to bless it with perpetuity. Yeah. You know, it's like when Jesus, the Bible says he broke it and he blessed it. You know, and we talking about the fishes and five loaves of bread. It fed 5,000 people. Yeah. And it had scratches. Wait a minute. It fed 5,000 men. Men. Not including women women and and children. children. You know, so he's able to make that thing multiply and then come back and feed you the same, same thing you give out for others to feast on. He's able to make, multiply it and make it come back and feed you. And sometimes it feeds you in the dry season. Yeah. You know, especially when it comes back in the dry season. Um, that's good. And so working in church, oh man, it is not for the faint of heart. It's not. I tell people all the time, pastoring is not for the faint of heart. You can preach all day. But when you gotta pastor people, you know, you the folks, you know, that are loudest are the ones that don't have any stock <laughs> in the in the ministry, don't have any skins in the game, <laughs> you know, but they the ones on on Facebook. You know, naming the church. My pastor don't do this. And I saw somebody post yesterday saying, um, asking about tithes and offering. Talking about y'all about to figure out. um, No, asking, saying, uh, is tithing doing you any good now? You know, and I'm, I'm, yeah, I mean, I'm like, man, people use anything to 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 bring the church. Yeah. Mm -hmm. As an occasion against the church, using that scriptural language there, you know, but. You just got to keep going. You just got to keep serving, man. Yeah. Anything short of being crucified, you know, I think we got to put up with. Because, <laughs> I mean, anything short than being crucified. I mean, even Peter, when he was crucified, he was crucified upside down. His choice. Mm-hmm. You know, John, the beloved disciple, before he was exiled to Patmos, they boiled him. He survived being boiled. Now, that's crazy. Ooh. So, boiling him didn't kill him. So, they sent him to Patmos. That's where some people dispute, you know, Revelation. Say he's just crazy. These are hallucinations. But um, we accept the book of Revelation. It's been canonized, so Uh we ain't disputing that. However, the level of persecution that they endured just in the first century, you know. (sighs) Jesus. You know, Paul says, endure like a hardness, like a good soldier. Good soldier. You know. Um, And I'll go to 1 Corinthians 15 and 58 where he says, be steadfast, unmovable. Always abounding in the work of the Lord for as much as ye know. Yes. Your labor is not in vain in the Lord. And sometimes you have to encourage yourself. Like you said in in the other other broadcast, you have to encourage yourself. Mm -hmm. You have to. You got to know the word. Uh, It's it's good when you can vent. Yeah. You can call somebody. Come on, listen. Yeah. Give me your (laughs) ear. Mm -hmm. I don't even, you don't even have to reply. Mm -hmm. Let me talk and then we can hang up. Yes. You know, but I have to get this out. And sometimes some many other things you can take to the Lord in prayer. Sure. Yes. You know, but um some that's all part of it. Sometimes getting in the word, sometimes that quiet time and reflecting. Yeah. Um, it'll give you strength. You know, yeah. sometimes the Lord will show you something wrong. If something is wrong with them, but this is how you're gonna have to deal with it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, you can't talk to them crazy because that's gonna ruin it. Mm-hmm. And I found myself having to uh, do that do just that yeah. you know and see past the person see the issue yeah. what's going on at home what's going on in your life sometimes i rather just ask that what's wrong with you mm-hmm. <laughs> what's wrong you All know right. cause, go mm-hmm. ahead also i was just gonna say in your prayer and fasting and and worship time you know you don't know what people are dealing with sometimes mm-hmm. and so 
as uh, only what you do for Christ will last. You know, we have to include those things too in regard to dealing with everyday life and mm -hmm. dealing with everyday people because, um, you know, God gives us the spirit of discernment and sometimes he gives us, but sometimes we have to pray and fast and seek him for, for what the issue is sometimes mm -hmm. in people um, so we know how to deal with them effectively and hopefully even be converted over, Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, because we all about soul winning, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so hopefully being converted over to, to the Christian faith. Right, yeah, because you don't want to make enemies of other believers. Right. I don't think we think about that sometimes, like which scripture is going to win out? You know, <laughs> which scripture is going to win out? But then we have, uh, I believe it's in Matthew where Jesus says, if your enemy thirsts, give him a drink, if he hunger, give him something to eat. He says, for in so doing, you heap coals of fire on the head. Mm -hmm. And so, um, I'm not sure what it is. I should look it up. I'm going to look it up. Because um, <laughs> I don't want to give out the wrong address. No. Mm -hmm. um, but he does say that. In so doing, mm -hmm. you heap coals of fire on the head. And it's not to eliminate them right you know but it's 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 serving a purpose it's all serving a purpose and sometimes we forget that in church yeah. because we think folk ought to know better yeah but they don't we serve the same guy so you should know <laughs> you know you shouldn't it's be trifling ABC no more and D. <laughs> yeah. but you know we all learning we all growing mm -hmm. and that's our commitment you know because sometimes hey sometimes we are the person that God wants to use to impact their life. Absolutely. You know, so I've had a soft spot for that ministry <laughs> um, since I left. But hearing, you know, about the praise team guy, mm -hmm. and he was talking about some issues he faced at that ministry. Absolutely. I said, oh, Lord, some people just won't get it. <laughs> some people just, you know, because I felt bad. Mm -hmm. I felt that I left too soon and, and things like that. But. As I left, another door opened, and when I was fired from that church, another door opened, and that door was, you know, a great door for me. So, um, I felt good, and then I felt relieved, because I said, it wasn't me. It wasn't just me. He was relieved. I was, you know, because, you know, meeting a meeting after church, yeah. they holding my check. What y'all want to talk about? You know, something mm -hmm. I said, somebody twisted my words up, and I said, y'all know I wasn't up here saying that, so... It was hard, and it did make me want to quit. It made me want to rethink that. Um, and I'm like, y'all, it's just church. You know, I hate to say it like that. We're not even here five hours a week. And y'all raising this much sand about nothing. Mm -hmm. You know, but I realized the people <laughs> that raise hell at church raise hell everywhere else. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. they are. And then you have the people who come to church to raise hell, you know. They they don't have power anywhere else. Oh, thank you. But that little position they have at church, or maybe it's not even a position. Maybe they just have influence. Mm -hmm. We ain't gonna do what he say. Mm -hmm. You know, and you over there, you trying to figure out where the stronghold is. You know, like stay. She's so sweet. You know, they wearing you out on the phone. You know, they texting back and forth. You know, I have experienced that too. You know, but you just have to keep chugging. You know, you have to have thick skin and uh, you also have to be committed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got to be committed, yeah. you know. And I've talked to some people that, you know, the struggles in, in, in serving the Lord and be a ministry has been so to the point that they even wanted to leave where they were, mm -hmm. leave prematurely. Um, and that's hard. That is hard. That's hard. That's that hard to want to want to leave because it's not the whole thing. It's mm -hmm. just that one thing. Yeah. You know. But um I don't know. Only what you do for Christ will yeah. last. Because you have we have to keep our eyes on our purpose at that ministry. Yeah. You know. Yep. Our purpose at that ministry, no matter what's going on. Okay, okay, God, you said this is where I'm supposed to be. You're right. So you gotta help, you know, you gotta help me through this. Do that Kevin know. Hart. Help me. <laughs> <laughs> You know, what you want me to do? Yeah. You know, you said I'm supposed to be here. So what, what am I doing? Mm -hmm. What am I supposed to do? You know, especially if you, you know, don't have the support of your pastor. You know, you have to lean and trust on God. Right. And all things, you know, especially if he's a, if he told you to be at a place or you feel like that's where he called you to be. You know, so, yeah, we have to seek him first. That's right. And don't be afraid to pray about everything. Mm -hmm. You're released too. God, how long? 
Mm-hmm. You know, what am I supposed to do until then? Until then. You know, be faithful. The Bible says be faithful even unto death. We ain't talking about dying because these church folks will kill you. <laughs> if you let them. <laughs> if you let them. Mm-hmm. You know, you take all this stress home and Lord Jesus. No, no, no. It ain't that crucial. This is Jesus' church. This doesn't belong to any denomination. Yes. Or any pastor, or any family, or any whatever, any fellowship. This is this church belongs to Jesus, and so, you know, just kind of keep that in mind. Those of you that serve, those of you who want to serve, we're here to tell you it ain't easy, but it's very rewarding. I don't want anybody to get the wrong Absolutely. idea. It's very rewarding. Yes. Um, but even in that, you know, I go to John sixteen and thirty three where Jesus tells them, "You about to be scattered. They coming for y'all." He sends them home. Uh, and in verse 33, he says, I'm telling you these things so that you may have hope. In this life, you'll have tribulation, but be of good cheer for I've overcome the world. Mm-hmm. And so even in serving in the church, we serve in the music ministry. Uh, I serve in the word ministry, not as much, but uh, predominantly music. And that's mm-hmm. where I am in this season. All right. All mm-hmm. right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> but... <laughs> You know, that's that's where I've encountered the most challenges, you know, especially even in the word ministry. Sometimes people don't expect you to carry the depth or have a word. Yeah, they don't care. They don't expect you to have a, a word, period. And some don't expect you to carry the depth of a revelation that you have. Absolutely. And so you think you don't know what you're talking about. You know exactly what you're talking about. And it comes over and it falls flat. Mm-hmm. And so that can be also demoralizing, you know, uh, or then you have the blowback of who do you think you are, mm-hmm. you know, preaching like the senior pastor. Big stuff, big stuff. Mm. I've been in the minister's meeting, and this was odd to me. I understood it, but the pastor was saying, if you're not a pastor, there are certain topics you stay away from, mm-hmm. which I understand. Now, I ain't refuting that because he's right. But if the you, you, I'm from the school, you say what the Lord tell you to say. Okay. In some ministries, ideally, I'll say this, you have a pastor, you have a prophet in the house. You know, you may even have an evangelist that leaves from that church, comes back. So sometimes ministries don't have it to where those can function in the same house. Mm -hmm. That makes sense? Yes. And so sometimes we can get off track because our function doesn't fit where we are i was going somewhere with that i had to pull the train back sometimes our function (laughs) don't fit where we are sometimes our function does not fit where we are i'm gonna go ahead and say it sometimes our function doesn't fit got it and that's another time another place where you know where you just like lord what am i doing here you know, every time I say something, what you told me to say, that I'm clear that you told me to say, all hell breaks loose, you know, and it's like Elijah, you know, <laughs> ran for his life and God asked him, what are you doing here? You know, he, he fled, you know, mm-hmm. but God had to remind him. He had to remind him. And to the point that he reminded him, that's when we get to chapter 37 or oh, Ezekiel. Mm-hmm. Where he's talking to the bones, you know. Ah, oh, man, I'm getting my stories mixed up. One of them fled. Yeah, We're going to have to read. I'm going to do it right now. We're going to do this live on our tape because I don't want to mislead anybody. Don't Let me see. Uh, where, where God asked one of his prophets. Here we go. Mm-hmm. I'll just say that. Uh, what are you doing here? Uh, and he did it. Because they were discouraged. It's not Ezekiel. Is it? <laughs> oh, okay, no, this was different. Mm-hmm. No, not now. Maybe later. All right. Okay, so it was... Uh, I believe it was Elijah. Okay. Oh, I know how I'm going to find it. And thank y'all for hanging out with us right now. We are going live. Uh, totally 
Uh, uncut. Uncut. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because I want to communicate this message and I got to make sure. Uh, yes, it's Elijah in 1 Kings 19. Lord have mercy. I was getting my stories. You see how easy it is to be to get the Bible mixed up? I went from Elijah to Ezekiel. But uh, Ezekiel, God was prophesying uh, to him in verse 37 after he gives him that hard word in chapters 22 about the desolation of the nation because wasn't nobody praying i don't have time to talk about that but i'm back <laughs> first kings 19 <laughs> elijah flees and mm-hmm. god asks him what are you doing here? but it's it's so easy sometimes to get way off when you think you're just missing it mm-hmm. and you're not missing it it's just that your function doesn't fit where you are and sometimes you got to move around mm-hmm. that's what i discovered in that 2011 2012 2011, 2012, mm-hmm. not 2013, because by 2013 we were settling in at Calvary. But I had I quit a church after this after church, and I was fired. And I told my wife, I said, you know what? We just go into this ministry. We just gonna see what happens. You know, I don't even think they got a budget. You know, much of a budget, but we going because I know the word is being preached. And it's solid. So that was a great decision. Would you say it was a great decision? It was. It was a great decision. They they like family now. We've been family. Get your life. Well, to me. We've like been family. family. Now, but they've been family <laughs> to her. Um, but, you know, it's good to be in places where your spirit can be fed. Absolutely. And, and you can grow. And you can grow. And you can also contribute. Yes. You know, you can take what you have and give. And it's valuable. It's valuable there. And so, you know, we just wanted to encourage you guys tonight. We've been <laughs> talking about only what you do for Christ will yes. last. It's a, it's a journey. Yeah. It's a journey, man. But um, you got something you wanted to share. And I'm, I'm going to give you a chance to sh- No? Oh, okay. Okay. Well, she was thinking about something. Um, and I just caught wind of it while I was sitting here. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> I caught wind of it. She didn't want to share. Um <laughs> But yeah, you you know, in this, it's hard. It gets hard. It's very rewarding. But you know, when it gets hard, remember that only what you do for Christ yeah. will last. That people may forget. People may forget, and some people don't forget. They just withhold. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. They withhold it. Um, but Hebrews six and ten. God is not unrighteous to forget your labor of love yeah. that ye have Sorry. ministered to the saints mm-hmm. and do minister. Uh, so just keep that in mind, whether you are the, the church cleaner, the usher, the deacon that opens the door, the cooks. cook, whatever cooks, you know, we, we serve in the music ministry, yeah. you're on the security team, whatever it is, you know, just remember that only what you do for him, for Christ will last. And the Bible tells us to do everything as unto the Lord anyway. Yeah. Because it's not just in church. Right. It's how we live outside the four walls. You know. That's real worship. Yeah. That's real worship. You know, with your lifestyle. That lifestyle of worship. Mm-hmm. And when your lifestyle is worship centric, it's not hard to bring that into the church. Exactly. You know, sometimes we want to bring the church out when church Christ in us, you know, should be flowing out. Of us anyway, and that's why sometimes that's why it should be easy to turn up the cheek at church, even though I know it's difficult. But you know, yeah. sometimes we that's when we end up venting to each other. Mm-hmm. And so I didn't tell yes. them, but I'm gonna tell you what I wanted to say. You know, I let peace win because <laughs> you know because I, I love the Lord. Yeah, and and then we learn how to pray for our enemies. Absolutely, they become our enemies, so we pray for them. You know, we pray that God would 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 help us in the situation help them mm-hmm. you know help us get to a solution mm-hmm. you know and even bring us together yeah. a compromise you know oh man 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 yeah i know yeah i know so we're getting we're getting through this yes. getting getting through this and, and working to a new um level i guess a new dimension of ministry 
Yes. New Dimensional Ministry. So, yes, yeah, we go forward, y'all be strengthened. Uh, remember the word. Yeah. Saturate yourself in the word so that you know you got something to pull from when times get hard. Uh, when challenges, you know, are on you. Yes. Some of you right now watching, you, your church may not even be meeting. You know, remember to pray for your church. Pray for your pastor yeah. um, who has unprecedented uh, trials unprecedented issues uh that they're gonna have to you know work through they got to lead y'all through they got to make budget decisions yes. when we do come back they got to make mortgage decisions yeah. you know and they I haven't see. even been meeting probably you know mm -hmm. um if you can't support the church you know if your church is meeting this is a good chance to you know invite people to your church tell them tell them to tune in to your stream right. yeah you know it's it's simple you know find a way to support the church and then um you know ask god how you can support the, the church support yes. the vision and ministry of the church because remember what you do for christ is does not start nor stop at church does Absolutely. not start nor stop at church there are people we know people uh they haven't been to church in a while because on sundays they go feed the homeless <laughs> you know yeah now he gives where he he, he goes he gives and um i remember talking to him and he was talking about he couldn't wait to give at at the uh, watch night service the new year's eve service mm -hmm. i can't wait to sow my seed you know and so people serve god in different ways yeah you know you can meet any day of the week to uh you know to reverence god to have a meeting and i know some people point to hebrews 10 to 25 don't forsake the assembling of yourselves together some are so accustomed to doing you know but what day you meet on you know, Paul says we don't have to sanctify one day over the other. You know, so meeting is fine. Meeting is um, it's important, but it's not the end. Right. It's not the end of our service to mm -hmm. God. So remember, only what you do for him only when we stand before him will be counted in the end. Mm -hmm. And as Jonathan McReynolds brought out in one of his songs, before our works go up in fire. It's in the book of Revelation. You want to make sure that they're counted by the righteous judge. So we kind of spent this time today talking about only what you do for Christ will last. Yes. We are having a good time here on Quarantine Conversations, having uh, these conversations about topics that uh, are somewhat polarizing, yeah. uh, have something to do with church, have something to do with life, <laughs> all that kind of stuff. This is my co-host when she joins. Uh, <laughs> uh, she won't be on all the time, but the times that she is on, I enjoy having her here. Um, so yeah, quarantine conversations. Awesome. We've been talking together tonight, yes. today, in this taping about only what you do for Christ right. will, will last. last. Yes. And uh, I'm gonna close this out with Jonathan McReynolds' single right now is entitled "People." Lord, deliver me from people. Because people can get in the way of you serving. Mm -hmm. People can cause you to be, uh, they can divert you. You know, they can detour you. They can cause you to get off track. You know, but be delivered from people. Even if it's me. Some, that's like the said, last line. He said, help me when I'm one of those when people. When I'm one of those people. Because sometimes you can be your worst enemy. Absolutely. You know, sometimes you think more highly of yourself than you ought. Yes. <laughs> and you don't know how to humble yourself in certain situations. Because I'm this, that, and the other. Mm -hmm. I deserve. Those are two of the most dangerous words in, in the world, in the human vocabulary. You know, so help me when I'm one of those people. Help me yeah. when I don't know how to compromise. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't always have to give my way. Mm -hmm. You know. Say, deliver me. Deliver me. Because all mm -hmm. I seem to do, see, we can talk songs all day long. It's hurt me. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes you don't realize it until later. Yeah. You hurt yourself. That yeah. was you. That was you. <laughs> that was you, Doc. All you, boss. <laughs> that was you. So we hope you've enjoyed this time yes. to, uh, on today's show, Quarantine yeah. Conversations, talking about only what you do for Christ. Will last. We hope you've been encouraged. We hope you have been edified and, uh, most importantly, strengthened to get back out there and keep serving the Lord where you are yes. with what you have. All right. We'll see you on the next show. All right. I'm Fred Willis. She is. Ronald. You've been watching Quarantine Conversations.